Great, Saber Rights, Anonymous here. Wanted to discuss a little topic about parrying. Um, parrying is, of course, the act of preventing an attack from reaching you uh, or doing its job uh, by blocking it with your weapon. Um, now, sometimes people make the distinction between blocks and parries, being parried being more redirection and all that. For the sake of discussion right here, I'm pretty much calling a parry any type of block, uh, deflection, anything that's going to do that with, the, with your blade acting on the other person's blade. Um, <clears throat> so, what is, that's essentially what a parry is, but how are we going to use it? We, we use, in the sheet show, we've got our three types. We've got our shifting, right? We have our drop and our lift parries, right? So you're going up and down, and then we have our turning parries here, there, <clears throat> right? So uh, those three types of parries, this one right here gets, gets a lot of attention. Um, a lot of people will say, and I get this a lot in class, and all this going back and forth, um, what good is that? Um, why not just parry like this? And I always say, yes, you can. Um, generally speaking, when we're going all the way around here, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to do exactly that in combat, right? But one thing we do want to do, because we know we don't have a guard on our uh, saber here, is we want to protect our hands, okay? So as I'm going around, if I just go here, I, I remain very, very vulnerable and somebody can just tack them right there. If I go here, this kind of keeps it, <laughs> keeps it a little bit more dynamic, keeps them a little bit busy. Um, but it brings up a particular principle, is that we never just want to parry. We do do that in classes. We do have people just parry. I will limit, say, you cannot strike. Only the other person can strike. And so that forces them to kind of get their technique of parries and stuff down. However, in real life, when we are sparring, when we're doing any type of free combat, we never want to simply parry. Every parry that we do, we should be acting on the other person's blade or acting on the other person as well, right? Now, this is sometimes in lay terms um, saying, you know, every attack is a parry and every parry is an attack and, and all this stuff. And that is true. It's not very descriptive. It's not very, it's not a good teaching tool. It's more of a memorization tool. Um, so what does it mean that we don't want to simply just parry? If I just block low, right, then they are free to do whatever they wish after, right? But when I parry a strike of somebody coming at me, my intention, right, it may not be to attack right away, to do a fluid repost and have that, that parry become the attack and all of that kind of thing. But whatever it is, is I am acting on them, whether it's I'm trying to elicit a particular response so that I can set up a particular technique, or whether it's to get them off balance to test how far or how fast they can recover to their center. All of these kinds of things that we do when we are sparring, right? And you see that a lot of times where the two fighters are just kind of tacking at each other's weapons and all that, and that's kind of what's going on. You're just seeing, okay, what what kind of forces are we dealing with? You know, what is he or she likely to do with this this type of thing? But whatever is coming in, I not only want to block it and stop it or just parry it, right? But I also want to at least set up a repost. Now you can go into parry repost, parry repost, parry repost, and that will get you a certain 
certain number of steps in, right? <clears throat> Those are good for setting up larger combos and all of that kind of thing. Um, but when, if I just go to block and then attack and then block and then attack, it's a very obvious rhythm that can be picked up on very, very easily. So we kind of want to avoid just parry, repost, parry, repost, parry, repost, right? Um, so that our parry and the repost are all part of a larger equation, right? I'm coming in, I'm not only preventing it from getting me, I'm maybe opening up a particular line along this side that I can then attack freely. Um, all of these particulars are, you know, obviously too numerous to name because what happens in a fight is very chaotic and you're just going to capitalize on the uh, opportunities that, that present themselves to you. Um, but you can get more opportunities pre to present themselves to you if you act on the person's weapon, on the person, or whatever. Don't simply just parry, right? Whether it's I'm going to block it and start redirecting it over here, or I'm going to parry it and block it and let it and move it over to a certain to a certain side. So now that I have you know this side of them open a little bit more, all of these things can be done. Right? <clears throat> but we're always kind of thinking a little bit more than just one move response, one move response. Right? So it's not just hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Right. We want dialogue things going back and forth, right? Um, if we talk about questions, that first attack is the question. You can give them the answer and also be following up with your own question. So um, it's a complicated topic. It's a very interesting topic, and it's something that is um, very, very fundamental to swordplay of all styles. Um, but it is a difficult thing to kind of wrap your head around um, that uh, no parry should simply just be a parry. It should always be have multiple um, functions at any one time. All right. Okay. So a little tip for you as you go off into the arenas and, and all that kind of thing. Remember, stay safe. Put on all your gear. Like, share, and subscribe. Join us up on Facebook, um, on Google+, here on YouTube. We will see you later. Have a great day. And happy savoring!